entrepreneurial lunch and learn offered by the Lawrence and <laughs> Center for Entrepreneurship at Baruch College. I'm Gary Smalls, the program coordinator here at the Phil Center. The Phil Center for Entrepreneurship is a multifaceted division at Baruch College offering services and programs for the entrepreneurial community. Today's Lunch and Learn webinar is presented today by Chris Alvarez, owner of Transcendent Enterprise. Transcendent Enterprise is a corporate video production company that has been helping clients to create video content for over 20 years. Some of their clients include NYU, Mount Sinai, Columbia University, and Facebook, just to name a few. And we're really happy to have Chris here. So thank you, Chris, for being with us. Please feel free to tell our audience a little bit more about you before you start your presentation. Take it away, Chris. Yes, okay, well, I'll just make sure I was on mute. Um, just wanna go back and see what was the last thing you heard. I can start from the beginning, but I just wanna just double check because I said a lot and I just wanna know. I mean, I could just start from the beginning. Yeah, you can tell me stuff, yep. Uh, so yeah, as I said, uh, right now, in the, as I said, real world experience right now, I'm in my car, just waiting for the babysitter. Yeah, with my, my beautiful daughter. Our normal babysitter got sick. So we had to, you know, change things up a little bit. Mom had some stuff uh, where she couldn't juggle also too. No problem. Love her. Um, so um, yeah, so Transit Enterprise is a video production company. And uh, we do mostly corporate video live streams. Um, I, I'll go through a little bit of my history, but, um, you know, the, the video industry is, is I, I, I would say it's booming. I think it's a lot of opportunities. It's a lot of also competition and, um, even just to get to point of, I think, you know, the company that stands out is the one that's marketing very well and also, you know, finishing their jobs very professionally, which those are my two priorities in a sense of, um, those are my two priorities in the sense of running my business. Um, so, um, as I was saying, uh, I'll ha I have PowerPoint, very something very simple, but it's just an outline basically where I'm discussing um, everything. And uh, I was saying that the, you know, the name of this workshop is uh, how to sharpen your swords, your, your entrepreneurial sword. And um, I, I think that's extremely important because and especially in the business, in a business like mine, um, things are changing, technology is changing, the needs for clients are changing, expectations are changing, and um, you have to be able to offer the latest services, which is one of our mottos, and be able to be adaptable and flexible to, um, adaptable and flexible to the market because the market is not fair and the market does not care, you know? So uh, any excuses, you know, baby or anything like that, the market does not care. Um, and that's what the real world is. And school's a little bit different. Um, so just kind of give you the outlook. Uh, so I, I was saying that, oh, let me just go to my notes a little bit. Uh, so how to take this workshop, um, I was explaining uh, before that uh, what a lot of things I may say may not apply to you. And I always use like the, the chicken drumstick chicken model as, as far as when you approach any presentations and lectures or keynotes, you know, some of the things you might not apply to you, but some of the things will. And I hope you take some things from it. Um, the way I like to eat my chicken, I, I really just eat the meat in the middle and, and around and I, I don't really eat the other parts versus my father. He would eat the chicken. He would eat the whole chicken, including the bone. So we, we, all, we all eat our chicken differently. And, I, you know, but hopefully we'll take something from it. And hopefully you're not a, a vegan or vegetarian where you, you don't eat chicken at all. And I'm just saying nothing for you. So I hope that's not the situation. Um, I'm going to say a lot of little jokes, which are going to be really corny. Just forewarn you with that. And um, I'm going to take some pauses just to make sure you're paying attention because I know in the, the in the world of virtual virtual presentations, um, the, in the world of virtual presentations, we're multitasking, which hence what I'm doing now. Um, okay, babysitter's here. This is real time happening. Um, so, 
Sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, my office is on 27th Street and 7th Avenue. This is the lobby. Uh, and I'm about to take the elevator up. So uh, as I was saying, um, so I'll tell you a little bit of my story. Uh, it was always a dream of mine to have an office in Midtown. Um, as a minority owned production company, I really haven't, I haven't seen a lot of other business owners of color, especially having office space in the city. So it was always a dream of mine to kind of have that identity. Um, and, you know, just I've, I've had office space down here since 2011. I'm actually not far from Baruch. And um, also what I was saying too before, I'm looking for interns, account interns. So if you're interested in the video production space and uh, want to learn and see what that looks like, I would love to uh, interview you. As soon as you, get, as soon as you see my presentations, you're going to see I have an email, careers at t-enter.com to apply. Um, what else? And... Um, so yeah, with me having the office space here, as I said, it's, it's been a dream. Um, I started out in uh, in Brooklyn, but was able to be here since 2011. Um, we had a couple of shoots, so it's a little bit of mess. We had like three shoots yesterday, and today we don't have any. Um, so that's the good thing. A uh, little bit of my story. Uh, I have always had a natural knack for, I've always had a natural ability for um, technology and especially with video and and um, and audio, uh, it came to me very naturally. I just, it's funny, I mean, I just moved and I was setting up a TV and late night, like I couldn't go to sleep. I wanted to get it done before I went to sleep. For some reason that naturally drives me. And I say all this because when you start a business, it's important that you find something that you're passionate about. And it's a very cliche, very cliche statement. And, um, and it's one of those things where it's, it's really true. And the only way you find what you're passionate about is, is throwing yourself everywhere. And I mean, that's sort of eventually what I did and not saying no, when you, when, when opportunities come across do not say no. Say yes. If you think you would hate it, you know, still take the chance and find out and confirm that you hate it. Um, but it might be something there that you might love and you can kind of explore. Um, so, you know, with that, I've always had a knack for technology with media tools. And it's for some reason it came to me easily. Uh, so that's kind of how I chose to go um, into the media business. And since 15 years old, I started doing media production at my church. This was in the nineties. Um, I'm 39 now. So just to kind of give perspective of age, I'm at that age where it's like, I'm getting old and I'm, it's like, I, I have those moments now. And, um, I want, so with, so with that, um, with, you know, so I started in 2005, I started in the 90s at my church at 15, working at the media there. They had a small TV studio and they had professional Panasonic equipment. And I, it, I gravitated to it really easy um, and was able to understand how the studio works and was able to pretty much run it, you know, at least, you know, by the time I was 16, 17. Um, and, you know, from there, you know, I went to college and I was studying engineering and with engineering, I wasn't as interested and I wanted, I was really passionate about business. Uh, I met, you know, a mentor of mine who recently passed, uh, you know, God bless his soul. You know, you know, he introduced me into the power of business in the sense of, you know, putting money in your family. You know, he told me, I want my family to be something like the Rockefellers. And he said that to me at 17. And that kind of opened my mind up into kind of like understanding of, you know, living a legacy, building a legacy in your family name. And that really kind of inspired me at a young age, you know, be curious of, of being an entrepreneur. When I, uh, when I, uh, 
when I was in college, I saw other students starting their business and it just said to myself, I said to myself, why don't I just start now? And then I, I honestly just started asking people um, if they need any videos, I chose video because as I knew that's something I can do. I made it, I, I, the idea of starting the business, I kept it very simple um, and, and not allow distracting thoughts. You know, we all have distracting thoughts that kind of gives us excuses. You know, I could have had the excuse moments ago, I have my daughter, I'm looking for parking, but I said, no, I'm going to show up. And, and sometimes, you know, that's what the real world is all about. Just, you know, showing up. Um, so I just asked people, people replied and I started doing videos a little bit in college. So started doing little videos in my church and whatever challenge people threw at me, I just tried to, um, I tried to overtake them. So when, so, you know, from, from there, that's where the business kind of started, um, Tandon, I went to Tandon, NYU Tandon, downtown Brooklyn. They had an incubator. And within that incubator, I, I obtained office space. And with obtaining office space, uh, I just literally, I, I literally just kind of, you know, sat there and really tried to figure out what were the next moves my business. And also they, they, they've helped also to, I've, I've acquired Tandon as a client, NYU, which I'm doing work with them now, which is like almost 12, 13 years later. And, um, and that piece introduced me to do work with the major NYU from Washington Square. So I do a lot of work with them as well. Uh, and that keeps me busy. I mean, I've been working with Washington Square since 2015. Um, and I was, I kind of look at it odd. I mean, I'm, I'm almost finishing paying my student loans, which is, you know, really scary also too, uh, as a student. And uh, I would say a, a breath of the money from there. <laughs> It's kind of like going right back in. I earn money from them and pay right back, uh, which is like a little funny joke from there. Um, but I, you know, as I said, I, I've, I'm, I'm working with some of my. I have bigger contracts now with uh, National Urban League. Um, I do work with Facebook. Uh, but let me go back to, uh, as I said, what I was saying before starting the business moved the office to the city. Um, and from having the office, got the office to house equipment and to have a staff. Right now, I mostly just have an office manager and I, you know, I, our culture is pretty laid back. So I, I don't really have any start times unless we have shoots. So when we don't have shoots, it's a really laid back culture. So the office manager is not here. Uh, before the pandemic, we used to be in the office every day um, I will have an editor here and, um, there'll be multiple people here. I have a team of like, I have a team of like five people. Um, and when we, uh, but when we have shoots, everybody's there and everybody's present. Um, now everybody log into the computer systems from we're at their house and edit from here on the more powerful systems and our server and everything is here. And that's how we kind of do our post-production editing work. Um, so I would say from having the office, I'm just thinking having the office since 2011, it just became trying to figure out how to grow the company. And it's been a really slow process, you know, having an office in Manhattan, you get to see a lot of businesses close and you get to see a lot of them open. You get to see those businesses close. So I, my risk assessment, I, I've really just kind of, enjoyed the process, if that makes sense. Um, and I, um, I, you know, I, I, I never took risks that would now enable me to close the business. And it's just interesting that I'm doing a project with a client now, and this is real. I mean, I, the, I don't know if you are studying and understanding the current landscape of business. I, that's one of the characteristics that you need to have as an entrepreneur is to understand your environment and understand what the future may look like. And, and uh, when I first started my business, you know, really got serious with it, it was around 2008. And that was around um, the real estate crisis, you know, those finance, you know, bad economic times. And I had to have skills to enable to get my business off the ground in order to be here today. 
Um, and I, you know, everybody's saying it's going to be bad times coming, but I'm also in situations where clients are not paying as fast as they used to. And, uh, and I was saying just the other day, you know, I'm in between, you know, a client that wants me to put out 10, 20 thousands of dollars of risk and without paying me because some clients I could kind of do that, but, um, it's about, as I said, understanding the landscape and, and watching risk with uh, making certain decisions. Um, like I could have put, tried to work on the job and then that would have hurt me on so many other, um, that could have hurt me on so many other occasions in the sense of allocating capital to um, my payroll and to um, other things to keep the business going. You know, the at this point where I'm at with the business, it takes a lot of, I mean, to, it's relative. I'm not Apple or I'm not uh, which one, but it takes a lot of money to, you know, per month to keep the business going. And that's where a lot of business people probably trip themselves up. So, um, you know, and speaking of the topic of the workshop swords, you know, one of the swords that I'm currently always trying to sharpen right now is my financial understanding and, you know, to be able to apply numbers to the business. You know, I come from I'm, you know, I say I'm, I'm more technical and then more of an artist, you know, I would say as far as my skill sets and that led me to this point here, but in order for me to get to the next level, I have to, um, acquire more skills. Um, uh, so that's how, you know, that's, I think that's what I was saying before I realized, you know, so I was saying earlier that's skills. I mean, that, um, When you, when you start a business in a business like mine, it keeps changing. Uh, technology's changing. When I started the business, it was uh, the small mini DV tapes with the cameras that we were recording. It was standard definition. Uh, we weren't even using HD. And right now we're using 4K. Um, I think that's one of the things I love about the business. You always have to be very strategic and you always have to offer clients the latest technology um, and expectations. You always have to, like I'm always studying my market. I'm always looking to see what companies are doing better videos than me to make sure that I can match up to that. Um, and you know, in the corporate, in the in the corporate video production world is very competition, there's a lot of competition. There's, you know, as technology becomes cheap, cheaper, and I think that's one of the things that allowed me to be able to get into business. Um, because if I tried to start this business in the eighties, it would have been impossible. I wouldn't be able to afford a camera. Or I wouldn't be able to, uh, it would have took a lot more capital. I would have to have investors. I, you know, it would have been a lot harder, but because technology became a little bit cheaper, you know, I was able to put a camera on my mother's credit card or, um, you know, I, I really kind of leverage a lot of, the um nyu tandon at with their equipment to even start the business and and that's you know i tried to figure out what's the safest way to leverage starting the business without having to use having so much capital um you know and I, you know as i said one you know so i i started the business really without um raising any money which that's what a lot of businesses do now um but everybody route is different um i rather not raise money i'd rather try to you know do it on my own whim and that's how, that goes back to me taking my time and not taking the risk um but some people are comfortable with taking people's money and trying to see what happens and if something works out well they go forward and if something goes all the way bad you know i don't even know how that works out they they paid off or i don't know how they you know or the people just lose their money and the reputation is messed up you know so i you know so you know that's i haven't i, I have not taken that approach um so going back to the the themes i'm just trying to think of catching you up in the sense of where we at so in the city running the office then uh the pandemic hit and uh i had you know i would say ever since 2012 2013 my revenue have increased between you know three to ten percent last year, my revenue increased almost fifty percent, um, and this year we should be increasing as well. And it's you know every year, I come into the year 
saying to myself that I can't be who I was last year. I have to be something different in order to, um, in order to get to the next level. And uh, when the pandemic happened, you know, I, I mean, I was, I was scared. I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know how things were going to turn up, turn out. But what I decided to do, I decided to stay positive. And I decided, I mean, I was one of those things where people didn't need videos at events or so needed videos, but I started making masks. Like I bought a 3D printer and started making masks to see if that would help. And I wasn't thinking more of selling. I was just thinking more just to kind of give it out. I was just trying to uh, be helpful in any way. Um, there was lots of strategy. I was like, even in the pandemic, I still had lots of ideas to be able to see how the business could survive. And one of the things that we did, we pivoted to a lot of virtual services. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I started messing with a software called vMix where we can host like virtual events and virtual panels inside of, um, inside of, um, well, it, virtually. And um, that, you know, I, you know, I didn't know anything about vMix. I heard of it, but learning vMix and then getting the staff to kind of help us with vMix. Uh, one of my team members, Emmanuel, you know, he knew vMix and he's the one who suggested it. And um, that would help, that helped us pivot out of the pandemic. And then as, you know, right now is, you know, in this fourth quarter, you know, I, I really feel like we're, you know, after the pandemic, we're kind of getting back to what it was before, which we're shooting a lot of events um and um and even doing live streams and stuff as well um but it seems like things are recovering and we're going back to normal i'm not doing too many i'm not doing too many virtual events like we did before um so when we speak so i'm you know switching over to kind of the topic of this workshops you know sharpening your swords and you know you know the sword represents kind of um characteristics and what you kind of need to be sharp at in order to get your business or to, you know, in order for your business to kind of grow and to, to get off and to kind of be successful. Um, I was watching uh, a movie, uh, the, you know, Bullet Train, where Brad Pitt, I don't know if you heard of it. And, and um, it's a great movie, check it out. And, you know, it's, it's basically about a train in Japan they're in Japan going through a bullet train and it's kind of like a hitman storyline. Great movie though. But at the end they were fighting with the sword and I took notice of like, you know, how sharp this sword was. I mean, they sw swung it and it was cutting the, the seats of the plane, you know, a little bit easily. And um, I just think about in business, you know, you're going to go through so many challenges and you, your mind has to be sharp enough to basically cut through any challenges that's basically in front of you. Um, and I would say some of, some of um, the swords that are, are very, are very important. Is, uh, some of the swords that are very important is, um, you know, being able to be a very adaptive, um, you have to be able to adjust to whatever, whatever's in front of you. And, and, um, and kind of go from there, you, you know, and with being adaptive, you can't some, you, you have to be hard on yourself, but you can't be too hard and you can't, um, you can't also be, you know, too lax. So it's, it's, it's a very fine line of, adaptability um, and changing to your environment to make sure, you know, things are there. Um, you have to have, uh, you have to, you know, in order to sharpen the sword, you have to read and find information. Um, I'm, the way how I consume information and stuff in my business at the time right now, I have a lot of, um, I would say online mentors. And, um, and I think, you know, that's extremely helpful as a college student I feel like I would definitely take advantage of that. Um, some of the people that I look at to, some of the people that I look at to um, 
increase and help my business uh, just from all walks of life. Um, I can, I'll share some with you, some of the people, and you can, you can write this down. Um, one is Neil Patel. Um, Neil Patel is like an SEO specialist and an, an SEO, SEO pretty much in any business is extremely helpful. And what is SEO? SEO is the ability to be found on Google and, and, and search websites. Uh, but, you know, he mostly talk about marketing, but video, corporate video production, you know, when somebody types corporate video production in New York City, you know, I want my company to come up. And so, you know, I'm always studying those skills to be able to kind of help the company get ranking because you search me in Google and then you see some of my work and then you contact us. And then from there, you know, we send you a proposal and then from, uh, from there we're doing a job and then you pay us. I mean, that's pretty much my, um, how my, my streamlined process work as far as in, you know, intake and clients. And, um, and uh, okay, cool. So yeah, so just want to say some stuff really quick, just because we're going to wrap up at 11 and we can take some questions. Um, Neil Patel's a mentor, Gary V, who's very popular. I don't watch too much of him as much now, but any of his lectures, I watch any of those. Patrick B. David, who I watch a lot of, um, and I can write this out if you need. Um, Patrick B. David, uh, overall entrepreneur information, you know, very, very valuetainment, a lot of good information. Andrew Jik, uh, I'm not so sure if I'm pronouncing spelled his last name right, but Andre, Andre speaks on a lot of the financial stuff going on. He basically took a lot of complicated financial terms and break it down in six-year-old, so a six-year-old can understand. Uh, meet Kevin. Uh, meet Kevin is also another financial guy, and real estate person, and uh, his work ethic and how he has his YouTube channel. And all this stuff is primarily YouTube, FYI. Um, you know, his work ethic is a good inspiration. And Alex Hormozzi. Uh, Alex Hormozzi is just like a Patrick with David, but he just sits there and talk. And, um, you know, he's kind of popular. He paid Grant Cardone $100,000 to mentor him. And he kind of talks about that process. And, that, and, that's, and that's, um, that's extremely helpful. And just wanted one thing, kind of go through some of the literature that I also go through, which is uh, Audible. I read a lot of business books. I don't read. I listen to them while I'm driving through on Audible. Uh, Wall Street Journal, also listen or I catch a lot of articles on my phone. Extremely important Wall Street Journal. The Morning Brew, which is a newsletter. Definitely take that. It gives, you know, this is a five minute perspective into the world. Uh, I usually read that early in the morning, 6.30, something like that, as I'm getting ready for the day. And Trends, I didn't join Trends. I need to join Trends, but Trends is, a, is also a, like a newsletter as well. So we could take questions. Chris, thank you, man. Thank you so much pivoting and running with it, living out what you're saying in real time, right? Pivoting and going with the flow in real time. And it's interesting that you talked about mentors because that was one of the one of the questions I had, you know, how important, you know, you mentioned using online mentors and YouTube. How important would you say is it for someone, especially who's starting a business to have mentors? How important is that? It's a very good question because mentors is probably a little bit of my, my I would say, I would say it's, I would say from one to 10, I would say it's definitely a seven or eight of importance. Mentors understand how to, they, they, they know where you've been. They, they, you know, easy to navigate. I've, I've been, I've been bad with mentors actually. And I'll be honest with that. I've been bad with mentors and I've been using a little bit of energy I can to reach out to some people. And I have, like, I have a mentor meeting in November. The, the, the thing that's tough with mentors is you don't want to waste their time. That's A. And B, you don't want, uh, is reaching out and, and getting in contact with them. But then, um, you know, sometimes mentors come for, you know, they, they, you know, they're in your face and it's really have to, like, I'm right now I'm at a point where I'm just like, I, I'm humbling myself. And I, I'm saying to myself, you know, you are good at this. You know, how do you do it? Um, I've always been a person to ask a lot of questions. I think questions are the answers to wisdom. So, um, you know, as I said, there's no shame, you know, I'm, extremely humble and I approach people to say, hey, can you be my mentor? Can I be a mentee? And I, on that first visit, I'm going to give gifts. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to bring a gift. 
and show them that I value their time. And then I kind of let them lead and, and kind of just humbly sit from there. And whatever I could take, I, you know, I just take from there and kind of go from there. But yeah, mentors are ex extremely important. Um, and just developing a network is extremely important. But the hard thing is maintaining it and staying consistent with it. Definitely, definitely. And I think that's one of the, sometimes the hardest things when you are, you know, focused on your business and you're trying to grow your business. Sometimes you're, it's that vulnerability, like you said, that humbling process of being able to say, you know what, I've reached as far, I've gone, and you mentioned, I've gone as far as I can go uh, with what I have, you know, and you, you mentioned earlier about, I can't be who I was last year as my business starts to grow. Um, and I know one, additional thing that's super important when growing is putting together the right team so you yeah. mentioned your team as they are now is there a particular process that you have when you bring somebody onto your team um i mean that's one of those things i'm, I'm so i mean i would say before the pandemic i mostly obtain people through referrals from fr like friends or people who know who are in the business somebody might say like a so, you know, especially starting off small, you know, it's one of those things where you have to be very, very careful of how you allocate your capital. Um, so a lot of people that started with me, you know, you know, they start off maybe free or getting paid very little. And um, and as I understand their skill set and how they could benefit the organization or as they become better, you know, their pay, like I said, their pay increase. Like, I, I you know, it's my thing that I give a raise every year for anybody who's working with me. Um, um, but I feel like the people referred to you, they were, they were, they were amazing. You know, they worked out, but, uh, to be trans also transparent when I've looked for people is looking at resumes. Um, I've put ads out on Indies and I put ads out on Craigslist and, uh, I would, you know, look through the resumes and then we will, you know, take interviews and I just try to let them know that it's a small company. You're going to be wearing lots of hats. You're going to, you know, it's going to be stressful. Um, and kind of, you know, un let them understand the culture. Um, but I don't think I have anything s special. Like I look at uh, some Elon Musk videos and stuff like that, kind of get some questions from there, but it's, it's mostly, it's most, I'm mostly going off my spidey senses. You know, that's the thing that kind of got me here too, my intuition gut. Um, and you know, I'm just kind of, that's where it is right there. Definitely. Definitely. That's great. Great answer, man. Uh, and I know it's very important, you know, um, as entrepreneurs for us to take care of ourselves. And we mentioned self-care in a past lunch and learn the importance of self-care and taking care of yourself on this journey. Do you have any recommendations or things that you're doing just to stay, you know, stay in one piece as you go on this journey? Yeah, uh, it's funny that you say that because I'm at a reinventing part of that. Uh, I would say so. When I turned 30, I started this business. As I said, I started the business uh, in my early 20s, 24, 25. Um, and 20, from 24 to 28, I ran it off of pure youth. Um, you know, not sleeping and still be able to work. I used to work, wake up like at 2 o'clock, and I didn't have a big staff. And my staff wasn't as good as who I did have at the time. Sorry if I offend them. You know, but... Um, so I had to do a lot of the work. So it was me waking up at two o'clock in the morning and, you know, working from editing and everything, two o'clock in the morning, going to a shoot at 10 o'clock in the morning and then finishing up maybe at eight o'clock and sleeping from like nine to two in the morning consistently from that time. I was running off of pure youth, sleeping in the office on the couch. Um, and I did not pay attention. As I hit 30, I was used to eat some chicken and... Uh, I eat chicken cutlet. I don't really eat chicken with the bone, but I was eating chicken cutlet and my feet used to itch or get tingly. And I'm just like, okay, I got to start paying attention to my health. And from there I started running. Fast forward to like 2018, um, I started running marathons, which I sort of took a break. And as I said, like right now I have a child, I have a wife and I have a family. So it's a, I don't have the luxury of being single, single like I, having the time being, you know, when you're single, you have lots of time. When your family, when you have a family, your time gets sliced and diced and you still have to get everything done. So I'm adjusting. And um, right now I don't have enough time to run. I was running hours and I was running 20, 25 miles a week. Um, but right now, if I run 10 miles, that's great. So I'm focusing now currently, you know, my, actually my wife's schedule and acupuncture, she's heavy into working with uh, 
physical therapists and trainers and stuff. She looks amazing. And she's into skincare, all that stuff. And, and now she's kind of like talking me into it. And because I don't have that much time to run and stuff like I used to, I'm, I'm listening to her. And uh, I was at Acupuncture actually two days ago. Um, and sorry, I hope I didn't get cut off. Somebody called me. Yeah, I was at Acupuncture two days ago. And talking to the acupuncturist, they convinced me now I got to seriously work on my diet because of all the new stress and stuff like that. You know, I'm getting a lot of inflammation and stuff. So now I'm focusing on my diet. Um, I'll be doing acupuncture, doing massages, and I'm still running. I'm still going to work out, but I'm not going to be able to do it as, as, um, as, as long as I'm as long as I was able to do it before. But I'm gonna squeeze these things in, hoping they take care of those things because running used to just solve my inflammation and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, self-care is important. I meditate. Um, even if it's four minutes, I take some meditation time. I focus on my breath. I, you know, I, I envision myself basically swimming in a pool, mm. you know, not, not swimming in a pool, floating in a pool. I, I bring myself in that mind and I just breathe. And um, that also helps me alleviate stress. But um, you only have one body and you have to take care of it. And it will, business will destroy you. You know, if you don't put yourself in the shape, you know, it will destroy you. Like, I, I see how, as I said, I, I, I understand because it, it just consumes your time and all your energy and you forget to take care of yourself. I'm not a person, you know, that make, puts myself first. And that's what I'm learning to do. Um, and it's important that you do that because the better I become, the more healthy I am. When I was in my top running shape, I was able to work five o'clock in the morning to one o'clock in the morning easy, you know, and, you know, not able to sleep that much. You know, but now it's changing up. Now I need a little bit more sleep, you know, and I was able to eat whatever I want when I was running all that time, you know, but now it's, it's changing. And right now I'm, adap I'm adapting to that. Um, yeah. So that's my answer there. Yeah, that's awesome. And I had to ask that question because, you know, I think as a as a business culture, we're transitioning to a place where we're being more mindful about our bodies and our minds and our mental health and things of that nature. So to hear you talk about that is very important. I think it, it's going to add a lot of value to the listeners. So I'm very happy you shared that. So I wanted to ask you if you had any last words to any aspiring entrepreneurs that's on this lunch and learn right now, what would it be? Inspire words for entrepreneurs. Um, uh, I don't know if it's inspired. I feel like it's like, I think it's, I'm just trying, I mean, if you take the journey of entrepreneurship, it's, it's extremely rewarding and it's, uh, but every, with, with a lot of responsibility comes with, with it comes with a lot of responsibility comes a lot of stress and a lot of, and a lot of rewards. Um, um, I mean, it's like, you know, I, you know, I just recently bought a house, you know, you know, with buying a house also too, I'm, you know, as I said, like, you know, understanding, you know, taxes, ta you know, the, you know, having profitability, understanding how to measure your taxes. That's a whole other story. Um, but I feel at the end of the day, free in a sense, um, you know, uh, I feel like every day I wake up, like I'm doing what I want to do this, you know, I, there's, there's days where I, I don't have, as I said, I don't have days where it's like, I don't want to do this today. Like everything is programmed by me every day. Like I've literally created my lifestyle every, from every decision from, you know, where I live to where my office is, to what I drive, to what I eat, like everything is in, you know, sort of in my control. Um, and, um, I, you know, having your own business, I, I don't see, I don't see you having a job and still be able to make some money and you're able to do that. Um, I don't know if that makes any sense. Someone had asked, what are you currently working on? Yeah, currently working on right now. I'm doing. I have a 12 city recording, and I'm recording in 16 cities actually with National Urban League. That's one. We're also doing an animation video with them, um, animation and like a long form animation, which is my you know sort of first time doing. I've done a lot of short term, so we're learning a lot there and created some great stuff from there. This on my Instagram profile, um, Transcendent ENT. If you want to see, you know, contact us and reach us from there. Um, uh, we're, you know, I'm, I'm taking on uh, marketing, like right now, this is the first time I'm doing a big marketing push, like Neil Patel, I've decided to hire his company. They charging me like $3,500 a month 
to do SEO services um, and the stuff, everything that he's saying they're doing, like I know it and it's interesting. I'm being patient um, because I know it, it requires patience to be able to kind of uh, harvest your fruits in a sense. So I'm paying $3,500 for them to basically do SEO and stuff on my website. Um, and that's a new space for me. I'm trying to think anything else, any other questions? I mean, I think that's pretty much, yeah, that's pretty much it. Becoming a public speaker. Uh, I don't know. That's I, I don't, I don't think I don't consider myself a good public speaker, but I, you know, I would say I, I always had a clear voice, I guess, even though I sound a little nasally, but, um, I try not to say, um, even though I probably said it a million times, but it's just, I think it's the spirit and it's just my energy and my confidence just to talk. Like, I believe I could talk to anybody. As a kid, I was a talker, so. It's all good, man. Chris, I want to thank you for spending your time with us and presenting. We appreciate you being with us. I want to thank everybody for participating as well. Please be on the lookout for a follow-up email with today's recording. We hope to see you at the next Lunch and Learn, which is going to be November 2nd, 2022, which is going to be entitled From Madison Avenue to Rikers Island, The Making of a Social Entrepreneur. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. All right. See you.